Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shireen Saini and welcome back to our initiative, What After Dentistry. We, as you all know, we are a team of dentists at, with healthcare management background to guide you and make you aware of the various career options in dentistry and healthcare. Today, we have with us Dr. Jonathan Eric Rao, owner and senior consultant at Urban Dental Clinic, Bangalore. He completed his BDS from the Pune Institute of Dental Sciences and after two years of clinical practice, he completed his MDS or Masters in Restorative Dentistry from Barcelona, Spain. We welcome you, Dr. Jonathan, to join us on our platform today and talk about the scope and opportunities after pursuing Masters from abroad, up, you know, after completing your BDS in India. So welcome you. you. So we would like to know more about your journey once you completed your BDS and your Masters. What were your struggles and achievements so far in your journey? I uh, want to thank you for this opportunity once again, which I can share some of my experiences. Uh, dentistry to me, I would say, I could uh, put it in two words. For me, it has been both fulfilling and frustrating. Uh, I have to be honest with you. Fulfilling in the sense that... Uh, you know, what is the difference between an MSc degree and uh, MDS degree uh, that we generally go for as a master's course? Now, uh, the reason why the, uh, the difference is in, in the terms of time, you know, of the course. That is slightly different because it's more specialized. If you look at it, like here we have conservative and endodontics as one subject. Uh, there, is, uh, there is either operative dentistry or restorative dent uh, dentistry separately. Endodontics is a, spe is a separate specialty altogether. Where they don't really get too much involved in the restoring part of it. So what is the process, uh, process you know, if a BDS graduate wants to enroll into these uh, you know, MS or MSc programs, courses outside India, well, how do they apply for it? See, number one is we contact the university and um, the, the usual the basic requirement for any person who is coming from out of the country is to complete have two years of clinical practice. So uh, can you please enlist some of the you know, few good colleges which are there if somebody wants to pursue master's course in Spain? See, the number, number one uh, criteria in my opinion is that uh, everyone who goes to Spain has to learn Spanish. Oh. Okay, If you do not know Spanish, you will lose a lot. Uh, and why is Spain and why not other you know, countries? I, I just have, I was curious to know this. Uh, the reason I looked at Spain was number one is um, in uh, most courses which are looking at the MSc courses are either in Germany, the UK or in uh, other European countries, Portugal or Spain. For you students out there, uh, if you have gained two years of experience after your BDS and you would like to pursue master's from Spain, so you have all the tips from Dr. Jonathan, you can apply in the university uh, from where you know he passed out and then go ahead with your master's course if you want to. Uh, so what is the total cost of you know this particular course if somebody wants to pursue? See, the price varies according to year by year, depends on the fees themselves. The, fee, the fees, when I did it, was roughly about 15,000 euros a year. Okay. 15,000 euros a year. Now you will have to add in your living expenses. There are no, um, what do you call, hostel facilities or anything like that there. You need to find your own place. Usually what we do as uh, students from the university, we take in a rent a house and live together and share the costs, which is the cheapest way to do it. And you can choose whether you want to live right in the heart of the city of Barcelona or you want to live outside where the things are slightly cheaper. So that way, yes, you can do that. But in terms of education expenses, I think the last I heard the expense has roughly gone up by about 5,000 euros each. And uh, you know, it, it varies every year, year to year, depending on infl inflation and other things like that. Okay. But yes, it's about that much in terms of fees, yes. But uh, expenses will be added up in terms of, you know, you need to go in for conferences, you need to buy equipment. You will have to buy a lot of equipment as a restorative dentist, including high quality loops, uh, high quality hand pieces, electrical hand piece, you know, a few things like that, which you're going to use. It's an investment for the rest of your life. You know, I still use the hand piece that I use in the university. You know, the electrical hand piece that I use, I still use it today in my practice. And it's been uh, now eight years since I finished and I'm still using that. So the loops, I'm still using the same loops, you know, so these are something that they make you invest at that time so that you can use it in the future. A, a semi-adjustable articulator and a face bow. I still use the one which I used from the university, you know, so these are things that you will keep for the rest of your life. So these are kind of investments only for your own practice ahead, of course. Uh, so just an average, you know, total cost that someone has to bear, like uh, the fees, the accommodation, if you could just give See, an average. accommodation, I would say depends on your lifestyle. Okay, okay. Uh, you can get it, uh, like I just had a very small room which I took in along with some friends, which cost me at that time about 300 euros, uh, which is just a very tiny room. Uh, it was just had enough space for my bed and a small, not even a desk. You know, but that was enough for me because I spent most of the time in the university. Uh, I would come home by 
10 at night from the university. And then, you know, before you know it, at seven in the morning, I would be off to university. So uh, it didn't really matter for me to have a good place that way. But if you want to live in a little bit more comfortably and, you know, things like that, it can cost anywhere from three to 500 euros, you know, a room would cost you. Uh, living expenses, food, your lifestyle, you know, all those things together. So you should have at least about 1,000 to 1,200 euros a, a month, I would say. Uh, that is when I was living. Uh, I would spend about 800 to 900 per uh, month. But now it should be a little bit more. And if you're living in the smaller town, uh, which is where the university is located, which is about half an hour from the main city, uh, it's, it's about 10 to 15 percent cheaper. I think that's fair enough. So, uh, you know, the, does the university provide any scholarship also? Unfortunately, no. Dentistry, unfortunately, has very, very, very few scholarships. So one can okay. take a loan facility from here in India and then they yes. can... I did take a loan from, uh, from Credilla, which is uh, an offset of uh, HDFC Bank uh, for studying abroad. Uh, and I think in another three or four months, we'll be actually finishing <laughs> paying it off, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, but uh, yes, that is the, uh, that is available, that facility is available here in India. There the scholarships only are uh, small scholarships you might be able to get, which might help you. Like I was given a scholarship for an additional year to do like a uh, advanced course. Uh, which I could finish after my two years. Uh, it was a scholarship which was given by one of the companies actually to the university, so to any student they would, you know, who they felt would be, you know, useful in this uh, field. So I did get uh, this thing, but that was only for the fees part of it. But then, of course, living expenses and all you have to take care of yourself. So, so I think that's fair enough. And. Uh, You've already explained how the student life is, but we would like to know more about if a student is, you know, if somebody wants to go and pursue master's school, what should they expect, you know, uh, while they are pursuing their master's and how is the student life? Student life is, is, is extremely good. Uh, I have friends who I have maintained for the rest of, I, would, I know I've maintained for the rest of my life. Friends who are both faculty and students. Uh, from all over the world, uh, which is something that uh, an experience which I always will treasure for the rest of my life. Uh, the, the life is going to be hard in terms of it's going to be hectic. Depends on once again, which course you're doing. Okay. Like our restorative course is very, very intense. Um, the, um, the orthodontic course is very intense. Um, the implant courses uh, not so intense because they have uh, they have it split over many days. There, there's like half a day of classes and you know things like that. Uh, the department of periodontics also they have half a day of class, but it's very intense. Even though it's only half a day of class and clinics. So the reason being that most of the faculty are not paid by the university. They come in as volunteers to teach. The only ones who are paid by the universities are the PhDs. And each department has roughly about 10 PhDs. Okay. So these guys are the only ones who are paid. The rest of them, they are doing it on voluntary basis so that they are in touch and they like to and they just love to teach. So you actually get people who are passionate about it, who are not there to just sit and get money. Because the, the best teachers are the ones we always know are the ones who teach because of passion, not because of what they're getting from the university. So, and the people who come in uh, to teach, they have their own practices. They all have their own private practices. So when they come to teach, they come only to teach, not to make money. So we get some really passionate dentists teaching us and that makes a huge difference in, in our career. It made a huge difference in mine. Exactly, because this is something I'm, I'm also, you know, hearing it for the very first time that somebody's really working hard, but they're not being paid and they are not bothered about it also, because they just and want to do that. 
yeah. exactly and the joy which they show when you when you do a, for example you do an amazing case at the end of it the joy that you see on their faces is joy enough for you know quite a few days exactly. you know because they are so proud of the way that you have achieved you know even though they were so instrumental in that um and that for me it was something that i think i needed uh because many times we always as students we feel undervalued even when we put effort but that is something that i never had a problem the days were very long i was i there were days i had to go to the university at 6 in the morning to finish up my wax ups to do, you know mount my cases to do everything because we had to do all our work on our own and uh, we'd finish in late but uh it was worth it i you know we ended our online classes twice a week which we had till 12 in, at night so we got very few hours of sleep but it was uh, we had the weekends completely off saturday and sunday was completely off so that way it was a real boom yeah, right exactly so i think this is amazing this is a great you know learning experience that you i'm sure you would have uh, gained from uh, your masters course so uh, please guide our audience in terms of like after completing this course if somebody wants to practice in spain is that possible do they have to sit for any examination or how is it See, if you want to work as a specialist per se if you want to work as in the university you know in our colleges here as a specialist then yes you will have to pass in the 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 exams which are there given by the DCI uh but most people don't because most of them are, most of us are going to go into private practice so as long as you're going to go into private practice it really doesn't matter if you're going to write an exam exam or not uh people might talk here and there and say oh you're not exactly a specialist that way according to the DCI but uh you you probably know more in that field because the what i understood is that we are getting a much well rounded education because we are not working only with like uh part of my aesthetic course i had training in the department of ortho i had training in the department of perio i had training in the department of endo okay so these four departments along with implants of course because i had already had some implant experience before leaving i was able to place my own implants for my full mouth cases etc and when you work together as a team you learn the best things from each other yeah. so we are not stuck to only working within other things so interdisciplinary uh, uh, work was very important so it's not necessary to do it but if you are looking at getting into academics yes you have to sit an exam okay, so this is you're talking if somebody comes back to india then they will have to sit for an exam yes. okay so, but i wanted to know in terms of like if somebody wants to work in spain only okay if one wants to work in spain there are uh, the, the protocol is slightly different you need to what they call convalidate your degree which means you will have to give in all your uh, your mark sheets your uh, syllabus for them to evaluate and they will see on which points that you are less than them and those particular subjects you will have to do in your uh, exams so the thing is all the exams are completely in spanish okay there is no english option at all uh, so which is a which if you are ready to go in will take some time because number one is not all the universities offer the exams it's not a it's not an exam that is regulated by the the government themselves it's uh, it's regulated by universities so not all universities offer these examination options every year so it depends on where you're looking to get some universities are a little easier to do it some the thing so it each depends on the university per se okay. the other way of going about it which is a little bit more straight forward is doing the final two years of your dental training once again your undergraduate training and uh, that is a simple and straight forward way at the end of two years you are you're graduated to be a dentist there so even of the ma- even when you complete your masters course in spain after completing that course also you will have to sit for an exam or you can directly start working you have to sit for the 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 undergraduate licensing exam that's what i'm saying because the undergraduate licensing exam what we have noticed not just from india but from most developing countries 
we are deficient in the field of orthodontics, pediatrics, special needs dentistry, geriatric dentistry, some things that we don't really cover in detail in our country. So those things are very important in their country, in the Western countries. So we need to be on equal and par, and also understanding their healthcare system. Right. which is the community dentistry, what we call here in India. So public health dentistry, that is what, those are the common exams that we need to work on there. Okay. So it's usually about six to seven subjects, which you will have to do okay. and it takes time uh, so it's, and patience. Very few countries have a ongoing you know, agreement with their country, countries like uh, Venezuela and other European countries, of course, they can practice. But uh, for Indians, yes, this is the way forward. Oh, that's, that's great. And uh, uh, I'm sure you've already elaborated the pros of, you know, pursuing this course from Spain, but I'm sure there must be some challenges also. So could you elaborate on the challenges? The challenges are number one, the language. Okay. Because you're not only going to have to uh, communicate with uh, people around, in and around the university in Spanish, but also you'll also have to communicate with the patients in Spanish. And especially in dentistry, it is all, uh, it's everything depends on your communication with your patients. So unless you are fluent with that, or unless you have an uh, extremely good translator with you all the time, which you will not have that, uh, have at all the time, uh, that is the main challenge. Uh, the other thing is that all around the all around the I mean the the country of Spain, uh, very few people speak good English. So it's only in the big cities like Barcelona and Madrid where people speak English, and you will find only pockets of them speaking English. So hence you cannot really communication is going to be the key factor. Uh, the other the thing is, uh, for those of us from coming from India, we have a full exam at the end of our course. There, everything is evaluated. So from your clinicals, this thing. So there's no big final exam other than your final presentation of cases. But the main thing is your everyday work, your everyday tests, your everyday this thing, everything is evaluated. And that contributes to 50% of your final 50 to 60, 60% 60 in fact of your final work and your final cases is only a small thing. You have to have a thesis uh, which you will, you can choose, which you will be working along with a PhD student who is also doing their thesis. So you'll be working along with them. And yes, so those are some of the challenges which are there. And uh, when communication is a challenge, it's always a challenge. That's what I would say. Right. Exactly. So uh, very correctly put. Um, now, uh, since you've done, you know, your master's and everything, we you know what, what are the pros and cons. Uh, would you like to showcase some of your cases to our audience so that, you know, they get motivated and see the kind of work that you have been doing? Sure. I, will, I can show you some of the cases. Yeah, sure. You can activate my screen sharing. Yes. So these are some of the cases um, which we have done. This is a full mouth rehabilitation that I have done. It involved both uh, implants, orthodontics, in, and uh, regular, uh, veneers, crown and bridges. It's basically a complete full mouth rehabilitation that was done in a 65 year old patient. Yes, yeah, so it was the initial pictures, you see the old bridges and broken crowns and everything like that. And by the time we completed it, um, it took me almost about a year and a half to do the entire treatment uh, so that we could give the best result to the patient. And this was the work. Uh, these are simple other things, closing diastemas with composites, internal bleaching and veneers for anteriors. This is composite veneers which were done indirect composite veneers. Okay. These are just changing old composites. You see the line on your 2-1 where this old composite is there and then we change it so that we can exactly match it. 
this was a trauma case that was done about two years ago uh, in terms where a patient we had to go in with placing an implant on the abal's tooth in two one we placed a veneer on one one and we did a full crown on two two, two. so this was a treatment that was done of course there's a veneer and implant case that was done uh, with feldspathic veneers done in the anteriors implants replaced the canine and the premolar on the second quadrant and composites as you see there's a lot of um, abrasion attrition on um, a lot of the cases so we have to restore it so this was the this was a picture of the smile at the end of the treatment and these are veneers which were done they're changing full ceramic veneers for old composite restorations discolored teeth stained to give them a hollywood smile as you would call it there's a regular bleach just in office bleaching that we do sometimes and this was a case which was my first uh, full mouth rehabilitation case and there's a special case to me where we restored this person's smile um, using crowns and implants and a couple of veneers and he was extremely happy at the end of it the regular composite restoration which was done with uh, one of the composite systems that i use for a patient this was a ceramic crown and veneer case which we did for a case with attrition and wear on the anterior sector for an older man this was his smile and this is what we did this is what i did during my master this particular case and then of course changing old amalgam fillings that we are doing every day with inlays and onlays regular direct composites in patient's mouth this was uh, this is what right now i'm doing more of a lot of uh, rehabilitation of implants um i have not been i have not had time to do that right now i'm doing a lot of guided implant surgeries so full mouth rehabs and this is a similar case which we did a patient who already had implants in the anterior zone which needed to be explanted bone graft and uh, finally restored once again the upper arch with six with uh, i think we used uh, seven implants in the upper arch in this case with a full metal ceramic restoration on the upper arch screw retained Okay. This is a this is the patient whom we had done that rehabilitation on. She had come from uh, Germany and got her work done. And then veneer case, which is another specialty that I do a lot, and we conduct a lot of courses. Some of the cases, there are many more cases which we can do, but basically this is what I. like to do on a regular basis but i don't always get to do on a regular basis of course as uh, i started doing endo only about 2 years ago to be frank uh, and i'm enjoying it now and i'm going through my loving endo phase which i never got at the beginning of my career and i enjoyed the surgical part more now i am more into the i, I like the endo part which uh, i'm doing now and a guidance from a good uh, dentist to a friend of mine who helped me get into endo once again so i guess the important thing for all of us to take home from all this is you know we will always get um, to keep ourselves challenged we need to keep learning yes uh, i think every 5 years we kind of go through a spell lull spell where we get bored of what we're doing so we need to uh, reinvigorate reinvent ourselves and learn and uh, that will help us exactly and that's uh, absolutely i mean that's very correctly you said that you know it becomes very monotonous doing the same thing over and over and over again and you start feeling that you you doing nothing great as but if you see us people they always appreciate your work but then for yourself to keep yourself you know uh, to grow and not just professionally but also personally i think it's very very important to keep learning and then grow yourself reinvent and work on something that excites you to go to work i think that's very important
So one last tip or advice that every graduate, uh, dental graduate should follow according to you. Uh, I will share with you something that um, my, uh, the chairman of my um, head of the department actually who shared it with me, he said, you never stop learning. The day you stop learning, you die. And that's what I will tell all uh, dentists and every one of us. Uh, we just don't know everything. And we have to accept that. And we should not try to do some, and that is, that is one part of it. Part two is never try to do things just because you think you can do it. You study it, understand it, and then do it. Because you don't want to experiment on a patient. No one's asking you to have foolhardy confidence, but you need to have confidence when you do whatever you do. So the more you learn, the more you understand, the more you can do, the more you can offer your patient. And that's what the patient needs at the end of the day. Today, an RPD may be an option, but then if you educate your patient about the implant, maybe three years down the line, he may say, okay, why, why don't I get an implant done? Now, if you did your RPD well, he probably trusts you to do the implant also. But if you didn't do your RPD well, he probably is not going to trust you to do anything in the future. Right. So whatever you do it, do it to the best of your ability. Treat each and every patient as, not just as a patient, but as a person who is an extended part of your family. And if you do it in that way, I think you'll be very, very successful in the future. Gains may be few in the first 10 years of your life. And I will reiterate that once again. Gains will be very few for the first 10 years of your life in practice. And if you're looking at gains in the first 10 years of your life only, uh, the long term is not going to be very successful. Right. So look at it from the long term. And there will be days when you will feel like you want to quit. And there are days when I feel like I want to quit. But don't quit. Keep up the good work. And you will succeed in the end. Right. I think that's very, very, uh, you know, correctly said that learning should never stop. And all these tips that you have given, the advice that you've given uh, is absolutely correct. And I'm sure every dental graduate, you know, at some point of time, they do feel that, you know, it's not worth it. And then we should not work and do something else. But just follow your heart. Or if you think what you're doing is correct, is right, and gives you happiness at the end of the day, I think that's something that you should keep continuing to grow and of course initially as we say in all our videos you will not start earning or you will not start gaining all that you have dreamt for just in a very you know few span of your time you took five years of your life in learning dentistry so you just can't start gaining everything in just one one year of your practice it is going to take years and your or your learning everything goes uh, along with your journey. So I think that's very, very correctly said. And thank you so much, Dr. Jonathan, for once again joining on our platform and sharing the scope and opportunities after pursuing masters, you know, abroad, uh, especially from Spain and how it is, what is the application process and the entire, you know, the course, how it looks like. So thank you once again for joining and sharing your experience with us. Thank you. I'm sure, you know, all the audience who's listening to us today, they would be inspired and motivated to pursue their masters if they want to pursue from Spain. And thank you so much, everyone, for patiently listening to us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like and share this uh, video in your network, because this might help out somebody who's trying to pursue masters outside India. So thank you, everyone, for joining once again. And I will see you in the next video. Until bye and good luck.